So, I do not need this, uh, this flesh tone or whatever it's called now. Um, and, and I don't need all of this. I love all of these, but I don't need them. So what I'm gonna narrow it down to is the base palette that is what we're gonna move forward with here. And it's gonna consist of those four colors. And I'm gonna set all these down to the side here. All right, the four colors are Ivory Black, Cadmium Red Light, Yellow Ochre, and Titanium White. These four simple colors is for a color palette is referred to as the Zorn palette. And I'm gonna show you right here. So this right here, and I'll include a link to this, or a screenshot of this, um, is referred to the Zorn palette. So from these four colors, cadmium red light, the ivory black, yellow ochre, I made the secondary colors that are in between each one of those. If you combine all of those colors and variations, you're gonna achieve these skin tones right here. See? Pretty cool. And then just kind of experimenting with other colors. You know, here I used ivory black, a lizard and crimson. Lizard and crimson is a cool red, right? And the yellow ochre. That's the only difference between this palette and this palette is a different red, which is a cooler red. And you can see it makes a cooler skin tone. See that? Okay. And then if you wanted to play even more, there's another little exercise that I did where it's got ivory black, a, another red, and another yellow. And see the difference in the skin tones there? So that one makes more of like a darker, you know, a more probably ethnic um, skin tone to, to play with. But we're always gonna start with this one. Always start with this one. And that way we can get a good foundation to move forward with, okay? Start simple build complex, right? That's that's what we like, that's what we like. So, I'm gonna lay these out. I've already got my titanium white over here. I do need more yellow ochre. And usually I put it right there. So this is my standard palette right here, right? It's ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, sap green, lizard and crimson, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium orange light, cadmium, I'm uh, sorry, yellow ochre, and then cadmium yellow medium. But again, for skin tones, we're gonna do this. Yellow ochre. Cadmium red light. Ivory black, and it is important that you use ivory black because that effectively becomes our blue. What we just did there is create um, colors from, or gather colors from our primary color wheel, which is yellow, red, blue. But in this case, we're using yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ivory black, and then of course, white. I might put out a little bit more white. Okay. Alrighty, so let's make a color. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of my yellow ochre here. Quite a bit there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this cadmium orange, I'm sorry, cadmium red light. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna start off on just grabbing a little bit of this ivory black. Mix that together. Okay, you can already see a nice rich color starting to appear here. I'm going to grab one of my I have little sample cards that are just kind of keep to the side. This is Arches oil painting paper that I just cut up so I can kind of see some things every now and then, kind of compare it against the white. See that? And then if I bring it over here, kind 
and compare it against her. So right now that one's more towards the yellow ochre side, right? So that one won't look all that good for us. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the cadmium red light. Okay, let's add a little bit of the white. Now we can start to see a better flesh tone coming out. See that? I'm gonna compare it against my hand. That's pretty good color right there. That's probably more towards the shadow side, right? All right. Now, if I want to do the highlights, that's probably more towards the shadow. I'm just gonna pull off a little bit to the side here. And I want to. I want to think about like her. Mm, let's go. Yeah. So this might be good. I think I'd even add a little bit more color for the shadows, but we definitely need to get lighter. Yep, yep. Grab some white. And what I don't want to see happen is her starting to look chalky. And how that can happen is if we add way too much white and not enough color. So you see how simple this can be? You know, just by grabbing from these, we can control how light the flesh tone gets. Look at that. Yeah, that's kind of like the highlights that are happening here. Whereas this one's closer to, I could probably even add a little bit more red and a little more red black to that one to get it to go into the shadow areas there. And then for the highlighted areas, so you got our dark, medium, light. I can probably go a little bit more yellow, like where the sunshine might be hitting. Okay, let's see where that lies. Nice, right? There you go. So, and that's kind of how you get your base colors. Now where it gets complicated is after this initial stage. Because, you know, if you think about us, like us girls with makeup, right? We all start out with a base skin tone. And that's what we're talking about here. Then we go in and add maybe colors that are coming from the environment. Like her, she's got hair reflecting around her face. That's actually a little bit red hair. So that's going to bring in some oranges and some browns into her skin tone because it's reflecting from there. Underneath her chin, she's got some darks reflecting from her um, kind of bluish wardrobe here. So it's going to reflect up under there and up under her nose and then around her eyes. So the environment is what changes the look and the colors that we need to select to you know continue to build her face but always start with the base before you start adding the decor <laughs> and the decor are those additional colors that like for you know us like i've got on red lipstick my lips are not normally this color my lips are probably normally about anywhere between these two colors right so let's start with that and then you wait for that to, to dry and then you add on the glaze so it's just a, a very iterative process and it's a nice you know kind of relaxing if you can kind of get into it inside you know and, and really kind of look at the picture and evaluate what colors you're seeing okay all right so i'm actually gonna paint on her face just a little bit now uh, i'm going to show you something else real quick one sec so one of the things that i encourage you to do is to write about what you see in your paintings. And so one of the things that I did, cause I don't always paint on them day after day after day. And um, so I kind of forget sometimes what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, and so what I'll do is I'll write it out. And so I have this note shelf and in note shelf, um, I kind of keep track and write about what I was thinking and then like so you can see again a separate page and it's like things I'd like to resolve so that way when I come back 
I've thought about her a little bit more and kind of things that I want to resolve. So when I come back to her, I can kind of look at my notes and go, okay, so what I said um, is I don't necessarily mind her looking upset, but the mouth and eyes need a bit more definition. And I think you can agree with that. It does need some more definition. You know, you can't really see the edges of her mouth. You can't see the, the structure of her eyes very well. And those are probably, to me, the most important things to capture to ensure that a likeness happens, right? And when we talk about likeness, that is like looking at somebody a, a, a mile away or a quarter of a mile away. You know it's them based on the structure of their face. It doesn't have to look exactly like them, but you know it needs to have the same structure and definitive line, so to speak. So that's what I'm talking about. I don't care if it's exactly like the picture. If I wanted the picture, I would print the picture. I'm creating something that's new for me that tells a different story. Okay, so I want to address her eyes and her mouth. Um, I'd like to see some more blue around her eyes, pink up the nose, soften the contrast around the mouth between the yellow and pink to better show the uh, flatum, uh, uh, filtrum. Filtrum. <laughs> That's this little part right here. Filtrum. Um, the dress on the back side, which I was thinking right here, needs more definition to show where her body begins and the material bellows. See, I'm pretty picky on my, my paintings too, by the way. Um, and remembering that the purpose is to play on the whites. At this point, I have my mid to mid tones pretty playing well. And then I made a note, I can't wait to paint on this again which I'm here and I can't wait to paint on it. All right, so those are my notes.